happy Sunday. Welcome to another edition of the Disney List. Al John and Kristen here with you. Before we get the show started, thank you so much for bringing us into your home every single week. We go live here on Facebook every Sunday, Sunday afternoon, Sunday evening. It just really depends on what's going down. How are you doing, Kristen? I'm good. I'm tired. Yeah, we're. it's been a while since we've done a late show, but we're doing one here for you. We almost called it a day. We've been very busy. but It's n- a very busy weekend. Nonetheless, we have a great show for you. We're going to be talking about what this week, Kristen? We have our top eight overrated attractions. All right. So we're going to have that. We're also going to talk about Small Disney World, Disney Plus, Star Wars, Marvel News to... So be on the lookout for that. Now, if you're looking forward to your next Disney trip, I know some of you are thinking it's getting a little crazy. We've been in we've been in the hold in the hold up zone for too long and we're ready to plan our next vacation. This young lady right here can give you a hand. Kristen, where can people get in touch with you to get the latest and greatest Disney deals like the ones you talked about last week? They can email me at themeparksandcruises at gmail.com. Excellent. Yes, you are. You have your ears. You graduated with your ears. Yes. So you are an authorized Disney vacation planner. She'll be able to hook you up with all the information you need to know and circumnavigate the ways of the, the strange and weird world of booking your own Disney trip. You see, there's no need for that. No need to stress. You'll save time. You'll save money. And Kristen has got tons of experience, not only with the Disney dining system, but of also being a frequenter of the Walt Disney World and Disneyland Resorts and Disney Cruise Lines and so much more. And uh, she will hook you up. Theme parks and cruises at gmail.com. You can also check out our link in the show notes because we also have our Amazon shop link and there we are affiliates. So if you do happen to shop through Amazon, click that link before you go, before you type out that Amazon name and then every little bit Amazon kicks back to us when you buy something and you complete your purchase, but you have to click our link first there. So check out the show notes or check out the DisneyList.com which coincidentally has all of our shows there. So if you want the show archive on anchor.fm, please be sure to do that. You can check out all of our podcasts throughout every podcast service there is uh, just about. And uh, yeah, that'd be great if you do that. So like, share, and subscribe to this content here on Facebook every single Sunday. Click that bell for notifications and subscribe to our podcast, especially on um, Apple, Google, Spotify, Anchor, iHeartRadio, Radio, uh, Radio Public, and so much more. So we'd appreciate that. All right, Kristen, are you ready? I'm ready. Let's get this party started. The Disney List. The Disney List. You've got to have characters that the audience, the viewer, the reader cares about. What makes a hero? What's friendship? What's the idea of sacrificing yourself for something larger? With the hope that it will be a source of joy and inspiration to all the world. The Disney List on Sorcerer Radio with your hosts, Kristen and Al John. Don't you love it when the bass drops, Kristen? <laughs> just like one of those marvel movie trailers you gotta love it how's it going everyone it's al john lifelong disney marvel and star wars fan every single week i'm joined by my lovely and talented co-host Kristen. hello Kristen. hello and what we do every week is we do the disney list that's the name of the show we do the disney list we bring in all kinds of great thoughts about star wars marvel Disney parks, travel, pop culture, but mostly Disney. It's like Sam the Eagle. This podcast is about all things Disney. All things Disney, Marvel and Star Wars, but mostly about Disney. So that's what we do. Um, Kristen, what are we talking about to the to the wonderful folks, the Disney List fam today? What are Our we talking about? 
our top eight overrated attractions. This is a hot take. Feel free to send us all of your comments regarding our overrated list to our Facebook page. That's the best way to get in touch with us at the Disney list, the Disney list podcast on Facebook. And also check us out on Twitter. And you can also check out the show archives as well at the Disney list.com. And then we'd also like to thank our friends there at Sorcerer Radio at srsounds.com. All Disney music all day long at srsounds.com. Got some news, don't we, Kristen? We do. I think we've got some news. Podcast, talking all things Disney with your hosts, Al John Go and Dave Bossert. October 2020. Well, that was nice, right? Yes. Coming soon. Another podcast, you know, if Dining at Disney wasn't enough, the Dining at Disney podcast, if the Disney list wasn't enough, we've got a brand new show coming up. It's going to be a new podcast with myself and Dave Bossert called Skull Rock Podcast, talking all things Disney, and we will definitely do that. Kristen will be guesting whenever she can, talking about the wonderful world of Disney animation and pop culture and theme parks and having some really nice discussions with all of Dave's friends. You know, Dave has got a brand new book and we're getting our copy. It's 3D Disneyland like you've never seen it before. He just posted some pictures. He finally got the book. Yay! He sent us some 3D glasses. I don't know. Uh, maybe if you're watching um, our Facebook video, but Jeannie's wearing 3D glasses in the background. You can't see You can't really Jeannie. see it. You can't see Jeannie in the background. See, I didn't think when I was like putting this together, I thought this shelf right here, nobody would yeah. be able to see, and it would start here, and then they'd <laughs> be able to see up. Otherwise, I would have moved this stuff and like switched it around. But, well, you, know. you still can. It's just week one. You I know. You still can. I probably even, will move some of the stuff We around. posted some artwork, too, right behind us, or right if you're watching the show, but right behind us is our rendition that's what we'd look like as muppets according to our good friend who's our good friend matthew matthew he's also and... he works for nasa who heard that we were big obviously muppets fans and he's got some he sent us some really cool art and that is you and i as muppets because we talked about it um, on one of our very first episodes of the disney list but we also have you would you want to show some artwork yeah you want to grab them yeah. okay so we got these, but I didn't realize when we got this bookcase that it was going to be as short. The shelves weren't going to be the right size, but this is one of them. This one was sent for Al John because he loves Jeannie. Yep. Which is very cool. Yep. That's one. That okay, hold on to that while I get this one up. This okay. One over here. I've got to reach over here because I'm not going to be able to. All right. Here we go. Here's the, here's the other one. Okay, and this one's mine because I had said that Hades was one of my favorite villains. And they're both blue. They're both blue. How about that? It's crazy, right? Uh huh. But I yeah, I love the genie. Genie's my favorite. Hades is one of your favorites. So there you go. I think it's so cool. Yeah, Matthew's the best man. And these were done on on um, like slate tile, you know, yeah. kind of stuff, which is really neat. Like you know, he's a very talented artist. So appreciate Definitely that. Heavy. It's super heavy. Very cool. Yes. Keep on talking, Kristen, because i got to put this stuff up. But yeah, so we, of course, as you can see, those of you watching the video, all kinds of new new stuff you can see behind us. We don't have just the plain wall anymore. And <laughs> it's got all Al John's Marvel and Star Wars and his Disney memorabilia. It's My got some stuff, stuff is in like two different rooms. It's got stuff. Your room has got a bunch of stuff. And we're going to post some artwork, too, which is nice. There's some artwork, you know, since we moved into this new place, there's some artwork that I've totally forgotten about because we weren't able to put up a lot of artwork at all, if any, hardly any, in our old house. But this one, we've got we've got room. So it's nice. It's nice to finally do that, for sure. Uh, I'd also like to say a big shout-out to our friends and family in the chat Lindsay Marie, our top fan, our top donator on anchor.fm. Thank you so much for tuning in. Also, Jeremy, what up, Jeremy? Do you know what they call a donator? What? A donor. A donor. She's our top <laughs> donor. 
She is uh, also our birthday weekend boy, your co-host for the uh, Dining at Disney podcast, Big Bubba B. Bubba! I tell you, your your podcast this week for Dining at Disney was epic. And what did you guys cover at Dining at Disney? Well, this week was the happy hour show mm. where we discussed the best and the worst Disney dining experiences yes. we've all had. Mm-hmm. And on that show, we had Kat, Jewel, Tony, you, mm-hmm. myself, and of course, Baba. Yes. Yes, it was it was an amazing show. So please like, share, and subscribe to the Disney Dining at Disney podcast because that was one of the most funniest. I even though I took part in the show and we laughed and we had so much fun with our Disney friends and fam, you know, because I call them, you know, we're not they're just not friends, they're family. And so I'm listening to the show because I always listen back for quality assurance, right? So I'm driving driving around for work. And I'm listening to the show and I'm just sitting there actually laughing loudly at the show because I, I, there's so many funny moments in that show. It was a shame that Park Hopper Sid and Park Hopper John couldn't join us for that show. True. But for anybody who's interested in that particular show, those take place every third Wednesday of the month. Absolutely. Uh, Mike uh, from wookie radio and mighty marvel geeks also in the chat hello what's up um yeah so bubba says on my shelf he sees the force unleashed video game and that's actually a really cool piece behind me because it's signed by sam witwer uh star wars weekends he knocked something else over in the back but yeah it's I got it signed. Yeah, you got it signed. Because for, yeah. I'm a, a Sam Whitwer, Whitwer fan. Yes. I like Tim on being my, human. Yeah, it was my video game. <laughs> yeah, well, I stole the cover. <laughs> so uh, anyway, so before we talk about our top eight overrated, and in the chat, feel free to type in your most overrated Walt Disney World attraction. Disneyland, your time is coming. You know, all three of those pieces right here are signed. Yes. Okay. Uh, you've got D. Bradley Baker. Mm-hmm. You've got Sam Witwer. D. Yes. Bradley Baker, of course, played um, uh, Captain Rex. He was all, and the, all clones. the clones. And then you also had, I'm, I'm trying to look, Dave Filoni had also signed it as well. Dave Filoni, of course, is the uh, writer, director, showrunner of star wars the clone wars as well as the mandalorian so he is just one of the best of all time he's so so nice so um star wars weekend forever jeremy hunt says in the chat this is true this is true so let's talk about some really cool things um let's first talk i guess since we're talking about star wars this just popped up are you familiar with uber eats Kristen? I know a lot of our audiences, especially during this time. I have heard of it. I haven't used it. So there's Uber Eats has done something that the fans and Hollywood have never thought imaginable, and that is to bring the world of Star Wars and Star Trek together. And this just happened. Oh it my. just happened. Are you, are you ready for this? No. Okay, I've got a clip. Here we go. Tomatoes. 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 Tonight I'll be Tomatoes. eating Uber Eats. So that is the voice. Could you could you hear the voice? You know that voice, right? Yeah, of course, you know Sir Patrick Stewart, John Luke Picard from Star Trek, and and Star Trek Picard on on CBS. But then that and other voice, X Men, X Men. X Men. Let's not forget X Men. There's a Disney tie. See the tie-in. Marvel and <sighs> Star Wars tie in there. That's right, Professor X. But then you also had one of the most awesome Star Wars actors ever. Mark Hamill. Mark Hamill. Luke Skywalker himself for Uber Eats. Let's play that again. It was only six seconds. Tomatoes. Tomatoes. (laughs) Tomatoes. That was just great, right? So how about that? Uber Eats getting Star Wars and, and Star Trek fans together. How about that? I don't know. I was thinking more of x-men star wars fans this is true this is true it was nice uh hey kevin in the chat another thing that happened also in the world world of star wars which is um 
which is I, I'm trying to I'm trying to make sure that I get this right here. Okay, so the Mark Hamill thing is out of the way. I got to make sure that is out of the way. Um, okay, well we'll wait on that Star Wars bit because that goes into the Disney Parks bit. Let's talk about this. They just dropped um, the Wandavision, a brand new Wandavision trailer. Do you want to yes. check that out? Check this out. All we have five paths. This is our home now. I want us to fit in. Oh, this is gonna be a gas. Where did you two move from? How long have you been married? And why don't you have children yet? Our story. I think what my wife means to say is that we moved from moved from where? Married when? Damn it, why? Oh, Arthur, stop it. Stop it. Stop it. Stop it. This is really happening. Like days ago, the spark of love that fills me. With the rain of love. Am I dead? No. Why would you think that? Because you are. Unusual couple, you know. Oh, I don't think that was ever in question. <laughs> One division, Marvel Studios exclusively on Disney Plus coming soon. I love Wanda Maximoff, the Scarlet Witch, Elizabeth Olsen, her character, and Paul Bettany, the Vision. Big, as you know, as I said at the top was of the show, Knight's long Tale? time. Wasn't that what what? Yeah. Paul Bettany was in nice yes. too. Yes. Yes. So I am a big fan of all those actors, big fan of their characters uh since ever reading as a kid the Avengers comics. I've always thought that uh, Vision and Scarlet Witch were just some of my favorite characters in all of the Avengers. But this show looks wonderful. Not only does it capture the 50s kind of bewitched vibe that we saw a little bit of during D23 last year when they brought the cast out to talk about Disney Plus and the Marvel Studios uh, TV shows, but they travel through her weird mind, that alternate reality that she created where Vision is still alive. Spoiler alert, Vision died (laughs) <laughs> uh during infinity war like two years ago in in movie in movie time a life a lifetime ago according to some people right when movie theaters actually did and were open so yeah they just go throughout all this this weird uh i dream of genie you know bewitch thing and then they travel through the 70s and uh, all the sitcoms through the 70s and 80s, like Family Ties and Roseanne in the 90s, just a weird kind of TV sitcom, you know, uh, situation where they're uh, apparently they're going to have, you know, kids, which they do in the comics. And then who knows what happens? The fabric reality of, of reality is just kind of warped and twisted and who knows what happens. But looks like a really cool series. And you're I know you're a big Paul Bettany fan, so. Yes. Elizabeth Olsen, you like Scarlet Witch. I do. She's the coolest of all the, the Olsen actresses. <laughs> it's true. This is true. And Ace. the prettiest. Right on. Down with that. Falcon and Winter Soldier, by the way, also coming to Disney Plus that features Anthony Mackie, which <laughs> is the Falcon, Sebastian Stan, who also looks very similar to a very young Luke Skywalker. All right, was supposed to be hitting later on this year, Falcon Winter Soldier on Disney Plus, but because they've pushed back the Black Widow movie, it was supposed to have already been out in May, pushed it back to end of summer. Now they pushed it back again. Who knows when it's going to come out? They said something that it was going to come out around Thanksgiving before the end of the year. They're having to push back the series because apparently. It ties in to the end of Black Widow. Oh. <laughs> it's like, we can't play this until you play the movie. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> so, well. 
Yeah, right. Yeah. So there you go. So it looks like uh, everything in 2020 in terms of Marvel going into Disney Plus is kind of uncertain. So who so, knows? So what? most likely we'll see it in 2021. Maybe 2021. That's okay. We still have Mandalorian this fall. True. Actually, we're just a couple weeks away because it starts at the end of October, Mandalorian. Coincidentally, man, um, Mandalorian up for or won tons of awards, but I digress. Let's go back to Marvel. Uh, they just cast in Marvel and Disney Plus. They just cast Tatiana Tatiana Maslany, who is the brand new She Hulk. So there you have it. Uh, she is from the TV show Orphan Black. I don't watch Orphan Black. I know you don't watch Orphan Black. Mm -mm. But she is playing the She-Hulk that is coming to Disney+. Plus. Um, Rick and Morty writer Jessica Gao has already been tapped to write the series, which is great because so many of the Rick and Morty uh, writers are already writing stuff for, for Disney, including I think they helped write Thor Ragnarok. Yeah. I think so anyway she plays jennifer walters who is the attorney and cousin of bruce banner aka the incredible hulk and in the comics the an emergency blood transfusion from her cousin gives walters her powers but unlike bruce banner she's able to keep her intelligence and personality when she hulked out but of course we know now that bruce banner is now professor hulk since he can talk and He's not so fond of smashing anymore. He just wants to just simply solve the world's problems. Being Very the weird. jolly green giant, you know, so that he is. So so there you go. The She-Hulk is already uh, being cast. So I'm looking forward to checking that out as well. Another thing to keep in mind. Oh, did you have something you wanted to say about that? No. Okay. Let's talk about this. All right. Disney Parks blog posted recently that uh, new lightsabers are coming to doc ondars hmm. now you can vote for your favorite right now they've got a brand new anakin skywalker lightsaber they've got a canon a canon jarrus from star wars rebels qui-gon jinn that one looks star pretty cool yeah, all right yes it does ezra bridger from star wars rebels cal kestis from Star Wars uh, Jedi Fallen Order video game, and also Lord Corvax from the video game That's Vader Immortal. Crazy looking! It looks awesome. It it looks like a weapon. Totally fierce and Sithy, very Sithy. So, Kristen, out of all the lightsabers I've mentioned for you that are coming to Galaxy's Edge and to Shop Disney and the new store there at Disney Springs, uh, which one of these lightsabers would you vote for? Which looks good to you? Uh, if I was going to get one, it would probably be Qui-Gon Jinn's. Qui-Gon? Yeah. I like that one. I like it, and it looks like it's twirlable. Yes, it's a it's a pretty long, long uh, lightsaber. I actually think... The Lord anyone, Cor Corvax one looks like you'd hurt yourself with it. It looks like... I it, totally it's stab myself with the... Medieval, those. stabby, you know, almost... Um, I was going to say Ben Solo, <laughs> but uh, very Sithy looking, very Sithy looking. Uh, I don't know. I have my favorites. I think, you know, Kanan or Ezra, definitely. Um, Qui-Gon, of course, you know, one of my favorites as well. Anakin's, well, look, Anakin, Anakin's it lightsaber looks... is very much like the Darth Vader, you know. Yeah, version, it looks it. For sure. But right now, products direct from Star Wars Galaxy's Edge will be shipped from the planet of Batu. Available now at the Star Wars Trading Post at Disney Springs, at Walt Disney World, and downtown Disney districts at Disneyland, and also online. So, Doc so Ondar is branching too much stuff. <laughs> online at shopdisney.com for a limited time so you can get your Halloween costumes. I think they make great Halloween costumes. I've got a Jedi outfit, you know, you've got a Sithy outfit, so that'd be cool. And um, you can definitely go over there and get some really cool gifts and uh, Halloween props and toys. They've got all kinds of those plushes, including porgs. Look, and, and you, can get, you can get the head of Darth Maul. Yes, the bust. And then you can get a, <laughs> what is that? What is that? Oh, that's a, that's a, some kind of Sithy holocron. 
and some really cool Sith statues, and then you have all the plushies, including the uh, the, the Cantina <sighs> Band instruments, which are nice, right? Okay, what what was it that we saw where the little kid was it to firefighters that he gave or police that he gave his child, his stuffed child too. And they were posing with it. We saw it on the news. Yeah. So there was a, uh, there was somebody that had, it was a little boy. Yeah. That posted, I guess, to first responders, uh, firefighters at first, I think. Um, Yeah. And they pass around and pose with his, he said that uh, you must be lonely during your job and we want to bring you some little happiness. So they gave the little baby Yoda over to the firefighters. And how cool was that? The and child. Went, went, uh, yes, the child, baby Yoda for the uninitiated. <laughs> Not everybody's into it, you know? So you got to say, oh, I know baby Yoda. I don't know what the child is. Some child? <laughs> don't need another child? Sounds weird. Okay. okay, well, Dave Filoni needs to give it a name or a it's the species child. thing. It's the child. Lindsay Marie <laughs> says it's firefighters. Thank you, Lindsay. Yes. So that was very cool indeed. I like it. I like it a lot. All right. So uh, vote for your lightsaber there at Shop uh, Shop Disney and the Disney Parks blog. I, which one are you going to? Am I going to let you go ahead and cast your vote? Sure. Which one? qui -Gon? Yep. Okay. Let's see who. Oh, oh wow. Cal Kestis, the video gamers are out. Cal Kestis from Fallen Order, Jedi Fallen Order video game, is up by 41%. Um, Qui Gon is next at 19. Anakin at 12. Lord Corvax, 11. Kanan from Rebels is at 10. And Ezra Bridger, lowly Ezra, is at 6. So everyone else is better than Ezra. <laughs> I've waited the entire lifetime to tell that joke. That is. <laughs> <laughs> it's i know it's horrible i can't help myself well if we ever meet kevin i'm going to tell him you had a really bad better than ezra joke everybody has a bad better than ezra joke yeah we'll we'll meet him soon i'm sure hey um also posted recently was a fall guide to foodie treats which um which you're going to talk about a dining at disney yep yep this week which but is going to be really talk cool about it. i love it i and love all it. the deliciousness i want to get uh the the little trolley uh <gasps> grave go ghost i think that's speaking of ezra i think that's ezra right yeah i think that is <laughs> isn't it it says a hit served in a hitchhiking ghost cinnamon donut container that looks so cool man i just want to i just i want one i want one so bad okay i think that's all for now and we're going to go ahead and talk about our most overrated uh disney attractions at walt disney world in just a sec don't go anywhere hi everybody this is dave bossard author of 3d disneyland like you've never seen it before this is the disney list on sorcerer radio that's right it's good times it's a late night might be early for some when you're listening to this if I mention the fact that we're on srsounds.com, Source of Radio, all Disney music all day long, don't forget to check them out. In fact, Sourcey is selling these really awesome, awesome Source of Radio face masks. And they're themed just like some of your favorite att attractions, Spaceship Earth or the Haunted Mansion, my personal favorite. So check out all the great masks. They are in stock and ready to rock there at srsounds.com and support Sorcerer Radio and show your love for Disney outside of the theme parks or maybe even inside the theme parks for sure. Kristen and Al John here with you. This is the Disney List. Check us out at thedisneylist.com. And right now we are talking about what, Kristen? We are talking our top eight overrated attractions absolutely you've got a list right i've what, got the okay, list okay so what is it about, uh, oops i pressed the wrong button again there you go it's not music it's a number um <laughs> how did these attractions make the list Kristen? one is they have very long waits uh so it's it's kind of like is the long wait worth the payoff is the attraction worth waiting 70 minutes for? Is the juice worth the squeeze? 
Is there that, a return on investment? So that is that's how how we came up with this. So all, all these right. attractions have very long waits. Okay. Uh, yes. Yes. And look, we we hate to stay in line and wait for things. We just want to just run gun. If we don't have a fast pass for these things, I'm not crying about it. Now, I can understand why some of you um you know, diehard fans or just looking to, or maybe been to Disney a couple times and are just vicariously living through, um, you know, vlogs and, and other people's trip reports and, and our, in our podcast, especially, you know, we'll definitely disagree. Well, so, and I'll uh, say some of these though are attractions that I really like, but I, I don't think it's worth waiting the amount of time you wait for it. Yeah. Some of these, I would say, all of these attractions have been known to break the 120 minute wait, you know, the wait list time. And they're constantly 90 to 120 minute waits. Now, is there any attraction you would wait 90 minutes for two out? What's your, what's your break limit? <laughs> what's your limit? Of tell how the long people. I really would wait. Yes. Tell the people. <laughs> Well, previously, uh, my break limit was 20 minutes because <laughs> I could go to the park more often. You know, when you can go every other month, 20 minutes is your, like, your breaking point. Um, I don't know. I may wait 40 minutes now. <laughs> What's the longest you've ever waited for an attraction? Well, I adjust my headphones. Go ahead. Uh, I think it was close to three hours. And it was in July of 93, and it was for Splash Mountain. Three and it's hours. why oh my, Lord. It's, it's, my dad hates to wait, and the waits were so long that that is why he's like, I don't, he, he just, he doesn't get why I like Disney. He's like, it's, you wait. All you do is wait. <laughs> oh my, I said, I don't wait. Yes. The longest I've ever waited for an attraction was two hours, maybe two and a half hours. And that was, and it wasn't at a Disney theme park here in the States. It was actually at Tokyo Disneyland. It was for Big Thunder Mountain. Crazy. I waited two, maybe two hours for that ride. I will never wait more than an hour. Yeah. You 60 and I, minutes, that's, that's my ultimate breaking point. You and I waited about an hour for Cars Land, um, doing radiator springs racers we waited a little more than an hour you and i also waited a little a little more than an hour to do pandora's flights of one uh, flights of passage no we didn't do we not no because we wrote it with a fast pass during the preview uh, and since then i think yeah we have i'm trying to I'm, I'm just trying to remember we we did wait an hour once Okay. Yeah, an hour. Okay. Yeah, I'm just trying to remember. Uh, well, anyway, are you ready for the top eight? Let's do it. Number eight. Okay. Number eight. This is one that regularly is up to two hours wait. Very difficult to get fast passes for during any time of the year. Very rarely can you walk on without waiting at minimum 20 30 minutes this would be toy story midway mania or toy story mania at walt disney world toy story midway mania that would be over there at uh i thought it was called midway at no nope, only uh, midway would be over there at um dhs so toy story mania and as much as i love this attraction because i do love this attraction i um i always win when I sit next to Kristen, except for this one time. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and that time, time I beat you. I always beat you with accuracy, <laughs> but I beat you with accuracy <laughs> and the score. I know. I don't know why that happened. It was just, I guess I had an off day. My arm gets too sore playing that. <laughs> but I mean, it's, it's one that I'm not, terribly if i miss it i'm not terribly upset by it i would like to do it but if there is any attraction 
at Disney Hollywood Studios that I want to, you know, ride. It's definitely uh, something over there at Star Wars or it's Rock and Roller Coaster or Tower of Terror. You know, Toy Story is just not on my top list for Disney Hollywood Studio attractions. So that's why it makes it there. But people love it. People but love I Toy do. Story. I love it. It's one of, one of my favorite things to do there. I yes. just think it's fun. Yes. So. <laughs> All right. Um, okay. Here we go. Number seven. Okay. This one. What you, you were big on. And that is Soren over the world. Right. Hot, hot, hot take. <laughs> Some people are going to hate me for this, but. But the thing is, even if you have a fast pass for this, you're still going to wait a good 30 minutes or so. At because least. Because what At you least. get in, you have to line up in, in the queue for loading. And that takes forever. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I. I don't know. It's even when they've redid it, I even now that they've redone it, I'm just, I'm just not in love with it. I'm just not in love with it. And maybe people would say that about, I guess if you had to, you know, play the game of, of what lives and what dies there at Epcot in terms of attractions, I think people would be very excited to keep something like test track, but if they had to choose between mission space and Soren, they'd probably throw mission space straight into the garbage. Oh yeah. You know, um, I like, I, I like mission space and I like Soren too. Don't get me wrong, but man, a two hour wait for Soren, man, that that's just crazy. And it's been like that for years. It's been like that for years, even with the old movie, it's been like that. So, I don't know. I like the new movie because it shows places that I've been to around the world. Jeremy Hunt says, it's worth hearing. Nice job, pal. <laughs> That's my best Patrick Warburton. I think the, the that is probably one of my favorite pre-ride shows, safety spiels, is anything Patrick Warburton does. He takes little things off. You have to put those puppies and up. these little And these little daddies what, these little, little these little puppies not, whatever I these little babies whatever uh i just lost my disney cred just now folks okay it's, i'm tired you're tired i am worn out number six hot take number six the Dumbo. most overrated oh it's overrated oh it has such a long wait and the attraction itself is very short yep um I don't know what else to say about Dumbo. It's just, I feel that every parent and Kristen and I are not parents at this time. Uh, Maybe (laughs) if you listen to us in the future, we will be, (laughs) but we're not currently parents. And I don't know if in my sensibilities that I would feel all about trying to get my kid onto Dumbo and, and how it feels to be on Dumbo. Um, but it's really strange having three, three of the same ride in one park. There's three of the same ride in one park. Yeah, because you have Esther Orbiter. That's right. As well as uh, Magic Carpets. Whatever. Yep. And then, yeah. So it's like three cloned rides in one place. And it's these little beauties. That's what he says. And these little beauties. Yes. Thank you. Now, oh, thank you, Jeremy. You helped me out for that. Nice. Uh, Mike says, uh, but the pager system. Yeah. Yeah. I don't care. <laughs> you're still going to wait. I mean, you're still going to wait. Not as bad, but you're still going to wait. Is it really worth the wait? Mike, your dad, you probably think that, you know, and that's why I'm saying uh, hot take, hot take, not a fan, but that's just me. And it's not just me. I mean, we did a lot of research, so we compiled a lot of things and we were like, you know, I kind of agree with them kind of agree with them so anyway it's kind of like looking for verification that we're on the right track yes <laughs> yes how do other people feel do how they do other agree people with feel us? about it how do other people feel about it it's not just us then okay there's other people from other websites that say the same thing it's not just us okay oh have mercy number five 
What is it, Chris? Tomorrowland Speedway. Number okay. one, I don't like that attraction. I have never understood why there's always a really long wait for it. It's just cars that drive around slow. <laughs> I mean, it's not even fun. Then when you come to a stop, there's always some teenager behind you that keeps like boom, 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 <laughs> the back of you. And you're like, really? <laughs> It's Please a, don't hilarious. drive like that when you get your driver's license. That's life. hilarious. Look, I just <laughs> don't like I look when I was a kid, I liked um you remember in Opryland here in Nashville, the Tin Lizzie? Yeah. Yeah, I loved that when I was a kid. Okay, well I'm gonna put it this way. Tomorrowland Speedway, it it's like one of those old classic ones. It makes me think of what before Cars Land when you had a bug's life. And you had all of those old school type attractions. Yes. And I have nothing against them because one of my favorite ones was the Heimlich attraction <laughs> the that they train. had. And then you had the like, what was it? The little, little bumper car thing. And that was fun. <laughs> so it's not that it's like old school. It's just, I don't get it. I don't get I don't get the long wait for it. Mike says the smell of gas fumes is the attraction. Yes. If you like uh no. getting high on fumes, that attraction's for you. Lindsay says, I'm so glad Tron is going there. Gosh, so are we. One hundred, one hundred and ten percent. Number four. Okay, I think I think we're gonna get hate mail on this one. Probably, but and if you want to send hate mail, send it to Al John at the Disneylist.com. <laughs> it is seven you, dwarfs mine train. You agreed with this. I do agree with this. You do agree. So don't Yeah, don't, because don't it always it has like a two hour wait. I don't think I've ever seen the wait less than 70 minutes. No. And the only time I ride this is when we paid to do the uh, after hours of it. It was so worth it just to be able to get off and back on this and not wait at all and ride it over and over again. This is true. We rode it three times that night. Yes. It was great. I could have. I wanted to ride it more, but you know. Yeah, with a, with our friend Jason, it was really cool. Jeremy Hunt is like in the chat saying "boom," and it's true. Um, I like the attraction a lot, but man, is it! Oh, I mean, it is so. It takes so much time to wait in line for that attraction. It it's a short ride. It is as well as it's not comfortable. It's made for two small people if you have two average adults in there you're not comfortable <laughs> you've got a couple comments Kristen. do you want to read some of them let's see jeremy says it's like what a 30 second ride feels so that see, way he agrees with me it's feels short. that way the juice is not worth the squeeze in this case folks it's and, just not worth the squeeze and Lindsay says only when doing after hours events so she mm. agrees with me on the mm. whole after hours thing it's I like agree. the way to go yes. with that attraction yes because the chances of getting a fast pass are like next to none oh all right number four more hot takes folks it's gonna get hotter as we climb up the ladder <laughs> okay did I say number four already? Oh, that no, was no. This is number we're at number three. Oh, I say I hit the wrong button. Number three. It happens every week, folks. You should be used to it. I didn't even catch that you hit the wrong number. Um, Navi River Journey. This always has like a two-hour wait when we're there. It does. Well, people like they want to see all of what Pandora and Animal Kingdom is all about, and they only have a couple attractions. What you gonna do? Um, I will only ride this if it's like we don't like have minutes. we don't have fast passes for things, and it's like the day of, and we're trying to get fast passes, and one's available. Then I may use it on that. But other than that, mm, no. It's a big pass for me, as Jeremy says in, in the chat. It's just a meh for me. And it's true. I I could care less about this attraction. I'm not a big fan of it. 
not a big fan. It's between that and Triceratops spin, probably some of my my passable uh, attractions of all the Disney parks. That is like if you took the outside, like Pandora outside area, and you at night and you threw it in an attraction with water, and then just added an animatronic before you exited pandora that's what you would have yeah i'm just i'm it's because it's just like being out in the main area in at night so all the the luminescent stuff yeah not not a fan not a fan uh yeah you know i would watch anything i would do anything else in animal kingdom bef- before doing that uh Primeval Whirl and Triceratops Spin are included with those three. They are literally on the bottom of my shoe when it comes to that attraction. Am, am I being too harsh? Am I being too harsh? Maybe not. Number two. Okay. Where shall we begin? Shall we just... I think when Maelstrom closed, <laughs> they should have just let the whole thing go. Just let it let go. Let it go. Because Frozen... Were you, were you waiting like I did? Were you, wait, 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 wait. Were you waiting this whole time to no, make that I joke? No, I wasn't. I thought... Like about the whole did. Better Than Ezra thing with me no. earlier in the show? No, no? That, was, that was very un, unplanned. <laughs> Likely story. I think you were no, waiting seriously. to tell the, that joke because it was like Al John levels of corny. No, that no. Joke. I, I just came up with that off the top of my head. You Jeez. know I don't come up with corny stuff. Yeah, you leave, usually just leave it to me to do the corny jokes. Yeah, I just it just came off the top of my head. Yeah, right. Frozen Ever After. All right. Yeah. It's like taking all the good Norwegian stuff out of Maelstrom mm. and then throwing Anna and Elsa in there <laughs> with some of those little snowmen things. I can't think of what it's called. Snowmen. <laughs> Not Olaf. Um, yeah, the little the little, just, little snow creatures, yes. You just go through it and you feel like, aw, I remember when the troll was there. You know, you just you just think of what Maelstrom was. You're like, oh, it's, it's just kind of sad now. <laughs> By the way, Jeremy, in the last discussion for the Navi says, well, Malewa... <laughs> <laughs> oh, <wow. laughs> oh, yeah. I know, right? Um, <laughs> should I mute you? I should mute you for heavens. Heavens to Murgatroyd. Exit stage left. Uh, Kate, that is the whole. That's the wrong. I know. It's Hanna Barbera. Yeah, that's the wrong company. Uh, Kate even says agreed with you in regards to Frozen Ever After. And uh, Mike Emke says, Maelstrom needed an upgrade, but, but this is what we got. It needed or a Norwegian upgrade. True that. Number six. Ooh, why did I do that? <laughs> why did I do that? I keep on thinking I don't have enough. I just don't have enough buttons for my music. That's what it is. Let's recap before we hit number one, Chris. Okay. I was starting to worry a little bit there. Thank you. <sighs> Okay, so it's starting at number eight. I don't have enough buttons on this Toy thing. Toy Story Mania. Soarin' Over the World. Dumbo. Tomorrowland Speedway. Seven Dwarfs Mine Train. Navi River Journey. And at number two, Frozen Ever After. Number one. What is number one, Kristen? This is one of my best friends. Natalie's favorite attraction. I want everyone in the chat room right now watching <laughs> and listening to this show. By the way, you need to watch and listen to this show uh, there at the Disney List on Facebook and on Sorcerer Radio. But what is number one? What is number one? Post it now. Post it in the chat now. What is it, folks? Kristen, what's number one? It is Peter Pan's flight. <laughs> Peter Pan's flight. <laughs> Peter Pan's flight. <laughs> Jeez. Yeah. It has a very long wait for an attraction that's old school. 
it is it's it's a great attraction once again all of these are great attractions they really are they're just man i don't understand the the weight behind I, I just don't always understand the weight the wait time is ridiculous there have been times the wait for some of these have been so long so long uh, we're talking like two and a half hours long i mean what in the tarnation um we will i i did some in doing this research the longest posted wait time for peter plan peter now you have me <laughs> saying it for peter pan's flight <laughs> it's because you're started you're thinking that you're gonna have to say flight and you're like putting flight and pan together the longest <laughs> reported wait for peter pan's flight has been approximately 300 minutes 300 minutes we've <sighs> seen that i mean and i've said what in the world yeah because it's um, crazy that's crazy they say the longest verified wait time has been 192 minutes recorded june 28th of 2016. Ugh. mike says the q upgrade is awesome yes it is and i was telling Kristen that uh earlier when we were planning the show i basically <laughs> said man you know the q is actually my favorite part of that entire uh, attraction seeing the tinkerbell um projection across the wall it looks awesome that's my favorite part about it but okay so but it is a good attraction one thing i'm gonna say is think about that you could watch two disney animated movies and the amount of time waiting for that mm. or you could watch a very long movie like Pirates of the Caribbean or Harry Potter in that amount of time. Mm -hmm. That's crazy. I mean, think about that. How much time you wasted all the things you could be doing. Well, clearly it's not a waste if they, you know, ride the ride and that's what they want to do. It's not a waste. But there's I, other things you could be doing during that time, but I don't see, think those and Disney people. would be so smart with these attractions that have that kind of weight to do some kind of like system like restaurants do where, you know, oh, okay. So you're in the, the standby line and they kind of estimate how long before you have to come back and you get a little pager and you come back later on to do it because you could be spending money. You could be eating you could be shopping. Yeah. My, well, Mike hit it on the head earlier with, with an attraction, the likes of Dumbo, where they have the fast pass for it, the little pager system, which is great because then you could run down, um, you know, fantasy land, grab yourself an ice cream cone and, and J little Jack, and little Jill be hanging out, having a great ice cream and you guys would be having fun. And that's how you keep children entertained in a ride that has a long, long wait. You know, why do they Who? offer pagers to begin with? <laughs> because the ride's wait time is ridiculous. That's why they not just have one, but they have two of them because there's they want so many people to ride and have their Dumbo moment. But anyway, did you, did you say ja little Jack and Jill? Yeah, your kids, you know. Who did How many... Kids, do you know named Jack or Jill? Does it really matter? I was, see, just, see, I was just, I was just, it'd be like, it was just an example, Kristen. It'd be like Aiden and Avery. That would it make just, more sense. Just an example. I'm, I'm just, telling just you. an example. Just, five. oh, for heaven's sake. <laughs> I've been, I want to, this is what I want to play. This is what I want to play. Music, outro music. Thank you so much to Replay Heroes on facebook there are friends that do the theme music uh they've got an awesome album out replay heroes they've got all the synth rock pop that you'll absolutely love uh this track is called vhs uh you'd love it too so please check that out anyway you can follow me al john go on instagram and uh, that's the best place to find me really geeky stuff 
You can also find us at the DisneyList.com, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, of course, is there. Like, share, and subscribe to our show. We've got all our social media links there. And support us on anchor.fm like our top fan, Lindsay. Thank you so much, Lindsay. Kristen, where can people follow you? Uh, if they're looking for travel deals, they can hit me up at, at uh, gosh, theme parks and cruises at gmail.com. And if you were all about Disney food, check out dining at Disney.com. Check out dining at Disney on all the social media accounts. And download the podcast that I do with Bubba. Yes. It's an awesome podcast. This week's going to be Disney food news. So food news you can use. Food news you can use. I love it. Absolutely love it. Not only do we have the Dining at Disney podcast that I also, I produce the, the podcast. I help. Uh, not only do we have the I'll Disney list. Thank you so much. That. Not only do I do that, we also do the Disney list for Source of Radio, which is awesome. I'm glad you're tuning in. Thank you for your support. We have a new podcast called Skull Rock Podcast with a former Disney animator and director of Walt Disney World uh, Disney projects and attractions, Dave Bossert. It's going to be launching in October. It is called Skull Rock Podcast, talking all things Disney. We're going to have some of our Disney friends and animators and movie directors and pop culture people come on the show. And chit chat a little bit. We're going to be talking about Fantasia, Fantasia 2000, The Nightmare Before Christmas, and The Black Cauldron, among other films that he actually had hands on work, um, as well as some of the attractions he also uh, helped with, as well during his time at the Walt Disney Company. It's also a prolific writer as well. So please check that out coming this October Skull Rock Podcast. Thank you so much for once again tuning into the program. Kristen, you have some other shout outs. I always do this to you. I know. You got to make sure you check out our friends, Park Hopper Sid and Park Hopper John with WDW Park Hoppers. Their podcast is awesome. As well as on Facebook, the Sorcerer Radio Fun Zone and our friends, the Disney Dorks. Please do that. Yes. Source of Radio, all Disney music, all day long at srsounds.com for all the great DJs from around the globe bringing you awesome programming and entertaining fans for almost 20 years. Next year, it'll be 20 years, Kristen. It'll be 20 years of Source of Radio. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Anyway, my name's Al John. And I'm Kristen. And, and we'll, we'll see, see you real, real soon. soon. Next week. Bye. This podcast is not affiliated with the Walt Disney Company or its holdings and is intended for entertainment purposes. All right, everybody. Thank you so much. We'll see you next week. Good night.